<sighs> what is up everybody, Rhett Thompson here. I know it's been a while, things got crazy. I've got a video coming out soon explaining where I've been, what I've been doing, as well as tons of videos, you know, the normal type of videos. Probably got eight, ten planned, filmed, recorded, or definitely keep an eye out for those. And uh, I'm excited to get this channel back on track and get these videos coming out again. So anyway, we've got breaking headlines. You saw the title. This is Four Thirds Rumors. Headline, great news. Panasonic says revolutionary MFT Zoom and new MFT Primes are in the works along with the GH6. So let's talk about the GH6 first. And I've really thought about it. I think this thing's coming out, guys. Just be patient, it's coming. Uh, Mr. Uno, at around 51 minutes, talks about the Micro Four Thirds system and says, one, yes, we are considering to make the GH5 successor. Now the article says, this is just a diplomatic way to say, yes, we are doing it, which I can see where they're coming from, but it's not exactly irrefutable evidence, right? But it, it is encouraging because they've said similar things before, I believe, claiming they're really looking into making a GH6. And it only makes sense because it has to be like one of their most successful cameras, right? Like, I don't know how it's not. But I think my evidence for the GH6 might just convince you. So if you guys aren't familiar, I'm gonna turn this to a different autofocus mode to show you guys. So Panasonic released the Lumix S5 last year, and if you guys didn't know, there was some really interesting design. So this is what Panasonic came up with as a battery solution for the S5, and you guys probably heard about this a lot, but if you look at the top here, these are the pens for the S5, you know, whatever. But on the back here, you'll see some pens that look really familiar if you own a GH5. And that's because you can actually use these batteries in the GH5. So obviously the, the GH5 batteries don't have these, so you can't use your old GH5 batteries in the S5, but you can use your new S5 batteries in the GH5. And so what that essentially means is we've got a new improved battery for a new camera. Point is that if they were gonna come out with a GH6, it would almost certainly need a new battery for all the extra processing power and things like that. So I am thinking that this little battery here is gonna be what the GH6 ships with, because it just, I don't know, it just makes sense the more I think about it that they would be coming out with this S5, but secretly planning on releasing the GH6 all along, because the S5 kind of feels like a, like a GH6. A lot of people say they want the GH6 to be basically a GH5S with the dual gain and a GH5 combined, with some extra features, of course. And it sounds like, I mean, that's pretty much what they did with the S5, and hopefully that's what they're gonna do with the GH6. We haven't really had a new lens for Panasonic since like the 10 to 25 F1.7 Leica lens. I think that's actually a pretty good segue because they said a revolutionary new zoom. I think a new revolutionary lens, what can they really offer here? And I think the big brother to that Leica 10 to 25, I've talked about ad nauseum at this channel at this point, I got you in a whole video about it, is probably one pretty compelling option for them. Getting like a telephoto F1.7 Pro zoom lens probably is not gonna have image stabilization, but it might. Definitely needs the clutch, definitely needs the aperture ring. It has the same front filter thread. That's almost like a little video cinematography film set, you know, uh, 10 to 25. I think the 35 to 70, 35 to 80, 1.7 would be ideal because 35 is like kind of your 70, not insanely telephoto. And then going into, you know, 140, 160, getting close to that 70 to 200, well, trying to keep it realistic, I think is the best. If you want more information on that lens that I've theoretically made up, uh, watch the whole video I made on that. It's not super long. Anyway. The other thing they could do is revamp some of their already existing focal ranges with more video-centric lenses. Because the GH5, hopefully the GH6, is gonna be very video-focused. And that means we need image stabilization. We need the linear focus that the S-series cameras have in all of their lenses, even if they don't have clutches. Speaking of clutches, these new lenses are gonna probably need these clutches too. Are we talking about some like really long range f2.8 zooms? I think that's the, really the three options is the faster glass, the longer zoom ranges, or both, and more features than other cameras, you know? A lot of Sony lenses, Canon lenses, they're all still fly by wire. And I think if Panasonic just put manual focus clutches on all of their lenses, they'd just become like the default videographer camera system because people hate fly by wire. These zooms should be really video focused. I think they should focus on having more features like aperture rings and clutches, image stabilization, 
weather sealing, and either longer zoom ranges than full frame cameras can do, or large aperture zooms so people can get rid of a lot of these primes and have really professional zooms. Like for example, I've got a video coming up on the Leica 12 to 60. And if you think about it, you know, it's basically the Canon 24 to 105, except it goes to 120. And imagine if we had a pro version of that lens that was a little bit bigger, you know, like the Olympus 12 to 100. I think if Panasonic was able to make like a image stabilized 12 to 100, 12 to 150, F3.5, F4, having a really long range, a pretty respectable aperture. Some people are saying like a 10 to 50 F 2.8, you know, stuff like that. Like make weird lenses, you know? The reason I love the Leica 10 to 25 so much is it's so weird. There really is none of that like 20 to 50 millimeter standard zoom. I've never found one on any system that has such a strange focal length. And it, it for me, it's really great, honestly. Yeah, I think Panasonic exploring those weird zooms, a 10 to 50 f 2.8 sounds really cool. A 12 to 120 f4 with a clutch sounds awesome. There's some really cool stuff you can do with micro four thirds and I don't think they've been doing it. Next is these fast primes and I've, taken the 1025 out and vlogged with it before uh, and it just makes me think man this is so heavy it makes me really wonder why Panasonic doesn't have some wide angle primes if you watch my Leica 10 25 versus the primes video where I essentially take the Leica 10 25 compare it to every prime I could find for the system pretty much it's really hard to find primes that cover that range. If you look at Olympus, their pro lenses only go out to 17 millimeters at the widest. I mean, they have a clutch, which is pretty cool, but 17 millimeters isn't exactly a wide angle lens. And then they only go into, you know, 45 millimeters. Panasonic's even worse. They've got, for their Leica lenses, their best lenses, first off, there's no manual focus clutch. That's a big problem. These primes, just like the zooms, I think really do need to have that clutch for the video guys out there. That's another reason I got the 10 to 25 is because it's really the only Panasonic lens, I think, for Micro Four Thirds that has the clutch. We need some fast, small, wide primes. Why not make a nine or 10 millimeter prime with like an F1.7 aperture and make a bunch of F1 autofocus clutch, manual focus aperture ring lenses? Can you imagine that? And if they just did like a, a 10 millimeter F1, you know, like that would be crazy. And they could probably mix up the focal lengths a little bit just so it doesn't completely destroy these other lenses and they're just objectively better. I think there is a market for these high quality lenses because with F1, you're getting a really, really shallow depth of field. Don't let anyone tell you. An F2 full frame equivalent is like plenty of background blur for most things. But on micro four thirds, you're still going to get the light gathering of an F1, which again is going to be super helpful for video people, photographers. And if the quality is good, if the sharpness is good at F1, that's going to be huge. How many people are buying Voigtlander lenses? I mean, they're not always just buying them for the aperture. They buy them for the characteristics and the feel and the vibe. But like, what does Voigtlander really bring? They're ultra fast. They've got great manual focus, and they've got an aperture ring. They've got the character too, but other than that, those three things stand. The reason they made the 10 to 25, for example, was because a third party manufacturer, Sigma, was making one of the most popular lenses for the system, and it wasn't native. You had to adapt it. It was a pain in the ass, but they it was still insanely popular because of what it gave you, which is why they came out with the 10 to 25 to sort of be like their version of that lens. And so why wouldn't they have an answer to Olympus's lenses with their clutches or Voigtlander with their really fast lenses. There's also not anything more telephoto than the 42.5. I mean, that's pretty good, but that's only like an 85 millimeter equivalent. And the next thing is like the 200 F 2.8, which 2.8 is fast, but not the fastest. And for most people, I think 200 is like way too far. And so I look at the Olympus 75 millimeters and think, man, could we get like a 60? millimeter or 65, a 70 millimeter F1, F1.2. I think for me, F1, F1.2 is kind of a must. F1 would be ideal. But I think the features are way more important. These clutches, these really good macro distances, these aperture rings, they all have to be there and they all have to be weather sealed and they all have to work really well and they all have to have good build quality. To wrap that up though, yeah, I just, I always thought it was strange that there's not a wider lens than the 12 millimeter. I thought it was strange that there's not a more telephoto lens than the 42.5. Olympus has ones, but Panasonic doesn't. 
And I also thought it was strange that for such a video-centric company, camera, system, all that, that so many of the lenses were the dreaded fly-by-wire, not even usually that great of an implementation of it unless you went to the really expensive lenses. If you haven't used a manual focus clutch on Olympus or like the 10 25 it's hard to go back, and I think that's really the way forward. So that's pretty much the end of the article. You know, I, there's not that much information, but they are teasing a lot of interesting things coming up. I'd love to see them get announced soon. Hopefully they've been holding on to them just because of the whole pandemic thing and uh, the whole, the, the vid, the vid, we'll call it that to hopefully not get, you know, does YouTube still care if you say stuff around the current world events? Yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. Please let me know down below. What do you guys think about this announcement? As far as lenses, you know, what is your ideal zoom you'd love to see them come out with? And what is your ideal prime? You know, try to keep it realistic. Don't say, oh, I'd love a 12 to 200 f, f.95 with, with phase detect autofocus and an aperture ring. And like, don't, don't go crazy. But like, I think the, my Leica 35 to 70 f1.7 is a good example of a realistic lens that they could actually make. So yeah. What's your ideal prime? If you if you could t go to Panasonic and say, make this prime, make this zoom, one, both, list them down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and this style more, I mean, there's like gonna be no B-roll in this video, so hopefully you made it this far. But if, if you like this style of video, let me know down in the comments, like, subscribe. I got some really cool videos going on and coming up, so please consider subscribing. I'm really trying to get 2,000 subscribers, so I would really appreciate it. But any interaction you've done with this video, just watching this video, has been a huge help already. I really appreciate it. But if you feel compelled to subscribe, I'm not going to stop you. So anyway, if you did subscribe, I will see you guys in the next video. But seriously, GH6, man, where, did, where is it?